See, when man came into the world, when Adam and Eve sinned, God said, you shall surely die. But after he said to Adam and Eve, you shall surely die, they did not die. They carried on living. And men, they had children, you understand? So what did God mean by said, you shall surely die? He meant spiritual death. When they died a spiritual death, their lights went off. Their spirit inside, it went off. Hence, every time after that, when man was born, he was born into darkness. You understand? He was born into darkness. He did not know God. He existed in his body. He existed in his mind, in his soul realm. But he did not exist in his spirit. And men started to seek after God. How can I contact God? And they started to do all types of worship. Some of them even went into idol worship. And that's how paganism and all of the religions of the world came about. And you were born into it. Many of us were born into it. And we knew no better. But everybody sincerely was seeking God. You understand? But thank God the day you accepted Christ. The light was on. So if you're here tonight, and if you have not received Christ, that is your position in life. You will carry on walking in darkness until you make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. Now when you do that, your spiritual life gets ignited. It gets reborn. You understand? And then you become born again. Are you with me? And then from that point, you start to see things differently. You start to know why you came on earth. You start to have a reason for existing and a reason for living. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, you must be born again. You must be born again. Hallelujah. And the only way to get born again is you've got to personally accept Jesus Christ as your what? As your Lord and Savior. You understand? When Jesus, listen, the Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. So he can light up your life. Amen. Without Christ, you have no light. My wife was saying to me today, she met somebody who we led to the Lord some years back, not too long ago. And now she met this person, and when she saw the person, she said, oh, they look so terrible. And so she inquired, do you go to church anymore? And then she said, no, for the last year, we don't go to church anymore. So you see what has happened. God lit up her life. Her spirit man was reborn again. And slowly, she caused it to die. Why? She's no more going for the word of God. She's no more running after the, the things of God. So what happened? She's quenched the spirit. And so now there's no more life in you. But there's life in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I said there's life in Jesus Christ. So if you are born again, just keep on being born again. Don't turn back. Tell your neighbor, don't turn back. There's only one life. It's forward. And you know, to be a Christian, let me share this with you. To be a Christian, it's highly challenging. It is highly challenging. No one said it would be easy. But Jesus Christ said, if you would deny yourself and follow me, you'd be worthy to be my disciple. So it doesn't matter what the pressures in life comes against you. It doesn't matter, you know, what you're faced with. It doesn't matter what happens. Listen, keep on loving God. Amen. Keep on pressing into the things of God. So what do you need to light up your life? What do you need to light up your life? Jesus. I said, what do you need to light up your life? Jesus. What do you need to stay lit up? Jesus. You're not talking to me. What do you need to stay lit up? Jesus. That's it. Tell your neighbor, that's the only way. That's the only way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want to share a few thoughts with you, and then we'll start to pray. In your Bibles, if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, you must start getting used to that scripture because we're going to labor that for the next few weeks on the Wednesday. It says, would you, would you read with me? It says, one, two, three, go. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
speaking by the Spirit of God, called Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there, uh huh, go ahead. Look at all in all. Four to one, to another the word of knowledge, to another faith, to another the gifts of healing, to another the working of miracles, to another diverse kinds of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free or have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is one member, many. Now, seeing the scripture, there are how many gifts are said? Nine. So all nine gifts have been given by the Spirit of God. To what? To His church. God wants you as His church to operate in all nine gifts. God wants you to know about all nine gifts. You understand? Because the more you understand it, the more you can function in it. It has been given. I said it has been given. We are not trying to get God's presence. We have God's presence. That's a difference now. We are not trying to seek God. People that don't know God, they seek Him. We are in the Father's bosom now. Mm. You understand? Are you trying to seek God? No. If you are born again, you're not seeking Him. You have Him. He has you. You are in His bosom now. You are in His presence now. And so if you are born again and filled with the Spirit of God, then the, then the Holy Ghost and the, the different gifts of the Spirit according to 1 Corinthians 12 should be operational in your life. It's not God that is mising and holding back these gifts. Amen? Amen? It's for you to keep, take a hold of it. It's for you to grab a hold of it. Now turn in your Bibles again to Romans chapter 1. And I'll read a verse of scripture from there. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere, all right? Romans chapter 1. I want you to read. Uh, some verses of scripture with me. Let's read from verse number one. Are you ready? It says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised to fall by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which is made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the race of the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among nations, for his name, among whom ye also, uh -huh. The scriptures, oh, oh, the scriptures call you saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, go ahead. Grace to you. Peace from God. Hallelujah. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. 
Go ahead, read verse 9. My witness, whom I serve with my spirit. See, 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 you're serving God with your spirit. Hallelujah. In the gospel of his son, without ceasing, I make mention. Now, question, who's speaking? The apostle Paul, right? He's speaking to who? To the Roman church. All right, go ahead in verse 11. Okay, verse 10. He says, making request, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to... So what was Paul saying? I want to come to you. Read verse 11. For I... That I may... So, Paul was not saying God wants to meet you to impart some spiritual gift to you. The Apostle Paul writing to the Roman church, he says, I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift to you. So, who imparted the spiritual gifts? You see what I'm saying? So in a meeting like this, when we get together to pray, prayer meeting, Bible study, or Sunday meeting, when we get together like this here, you may catch something. Because I've come to impart some spiritual gift to you. You understand? Today, when you listen to the word, when I pray for you, you'll go away from here, your life being changed. All of a sudden, you'll start to find something operating in you. God is not keeping it away from you. We are keeping it away from ourselves because we don't know, first of all, what they are, and second of all, how to receive it. When I come like this, you must be ready to catch something. So I'm talking to this church, and I'm saying, I long to be with you that I may impart something to you. (laughs) You understand? So when you come in a meeting like this, you come hungry. You start to come desirous. You start to want to pick up something. Now let me show you why you should come to church. Turn to Luke chapter 4. I'll show you why you should come to, come to church. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Just a small scripture. Would you read with me when you found it? Okay, let's read. One, two, three, go. And he came to Nazareth. And there was delivered. acceptable here of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and he sat down, and the eyes of all of them in the synagogue were fastened to him. And he began to say unto them, this day, he was speaking to them in the house of the Lord. He was speaking to them in the synagogue. And he said to them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. But where where, where was it? It was in the synagogue when all God's people was together. But you remember a few verses before that, what did the Bible say about Jesus going to the synagogue? It says, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Jesus had a custom. He went to church. You should be in church. 
That should be your custom. <laughs> it should be your custom for you to go to church. Because when you find yourself in church, you'll find God giving you something. Amen. Hallelujah. There are many things you are desiring. There are many things you are praying. There are many things you are eagerly awaiting for. There are many things you are prophesying. There are many things you are looking to God and say, Oh Lord, if only I can get that. But it will be transmitted to you in the congregation of the saints of God. That means in the midst like this here, there will be a spiritual transference. There will be a spiritual uh, a transaction. You will catch it in the spirit. When you go back in the world, you'll see a manifestation of what you caught in the spirit. So coming to a prayer meeting like this is not a waste of time. Coming to church on a Sunday is not a waste of time. Coming like this here on a witness day to church is not a waste of time. Paul says, I long to see you, that I may impart something to you. Who knows tonight what will be imparted? Who knows? You understand? Hallelujah. It's not a waste of time. Tell your neighbor, it's not a waste of time to come to church. No, it's not. It's definitely not. A lady sent me an SMS. She's not here tonight. Uh, she's a member of our church. And uh, she sent me an SMS the other day, and she said, my, my mother's terribly ill in hospital in Zimbabwe. Pastor, would you please pray for her? So I prayed. I sent her an SMS back. I've written her name somewhere. I know her surname is Kabe or Kaba. And uh, I prayed and I sent her back an SMS and I said to her, I said, I've prayed for your mother. Expect a miracle. She SMSed me yesterday. I picked it up this morning. I just read it now as I came down. The mother went to hospital, was sick as a dog in hospital, got miraculously healed, got up, and walked out of the hospital. Now, so she SMSed me. She said, Pastor, my mother's completely well. I'm gone back to Zimbabwe to fetch her. I'm coming back to testify. Now, if we can pray here and change things in Zimbabwe, surely we can change things around us. You understand? Yeah, are you with me? We are not struggling. We are not trying to be revived. You are living stones. You are revived. <laughs> Maybe sometimes you need to fan the flame a bit, but this is to fan it. It's okay, but you are revived. Tell your neighbor you are revived. You are living stones. You are living epistles being read of men. You're, you, you, I'm telling you, you are not tombstones. You are living stones. Hallelujah. That's why God needs us to go and raise up tombstones. People that are dead, spiritually dead. They can only receive salvation through you and I. You understand? But who knows tonight what you're going to get? Who has come tonight receive, expecting to receive something? I'm telling you, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did the Apostle Paul say to the church at Rome? He says, I long to see you, that I may impart something to you. So today, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we impart, hallelujah, with the power of God, spiritual gifts to these people. It will operate in their lives. When they get up from here today, Lord, they'll never be the same. Signs and wonders will flow out of them. The prophetic will flow out of them. Tongues and interpretation of tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, hallelujah, the gifts of healing in the name of Jesus will flow in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. According to the scripture, I prophesy that into being. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. Say I receive the grace of the Lord Jesus. Say I receive the power of God. 
Father, today, I, okay, I'm prophesying to you, you receive it. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy that there will be a manifestation of the Spirit upon every man and upon every woman in this place. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy that the word of wisdom will operate. Hallelujah. Are you grabbing this? When I speak, say, Lord, that's mine, I take it. Don't sleep now. Now's not the time to sleep. You understand? Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that today, Lord God, as I will pray, as I will speak, everyone that hears the sound of my voice is under the influence of my voice. In the name of Jesus, wisdom will flow out of their lives. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, the word of knowledge will flow out of their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that the gift of faith will operate in their lives. I pray, Lord, that the gift of healing will operate in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, the working of miracles shall operate in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, prophecy will operate in their lives. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I pray that the discerning of spirits will operate in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that divers kinds of tongues will operate in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray tongues and interpretation of tongues will operate in their lives. In the name of Jesus, so I receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I praise you. Now, I've transferred something. It's hanging in the air. You need to take it. Are you listening to me? I said I transferred something. It's hanging in the air. Take it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you praise. I give you worship. I give you honor, Lord Jesus. Your life will never be the same again. Are you listening to me? Can't be the same again. Hallelujah. You know, one of the biggest difficulties we have sometimes is that it's not that God is not doing something. No. We know how God operates. You understand? But it's that the people of God cannot receive it. They do not know how to receive. When you receive, you come with an open heart. You've got to be like a little child. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be like a little child. Hungry like a child. I mean, when you go for ice cream, right? If you really like ice cream, when you drive up, you don't say, mm, I want ice cream. You understand? You saw a kid going for ice cream. Mommy, mom, I want this flavor. I want that one and that one. And that's how you got to be. So if you come with your dignified self, you will not be able to receive. You understand? No matter how much I pray for you, it'll be empty hands on empty heads. But if you come like a little child, I want that thing. What's going to happen? You'll be fooled. I'm telling you. It took me many years to learn all of these things I teach you. It didn't come overnight. The dynamics of the Spirit is something you learn over a period of time. Now that I've received it, I'm communicating it to you. All you have to do is believe it and receive it. Now let the cell leaders come. If you're a cell leader, come. Hallelujah. If you're a cell leader or an assistant cell leader, come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The whole place is getting heated up. There's a presence of the Lord here. Now, after we finish, then you will be able to pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive? Lift up your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Why is someone not playing the piano? You help me and I'll pray for you later. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I'm going to transfer something. You grab a hold of it. As I will say it, God will give it to you. 
like the apostle paul says i long to see you that i may what impart to you some spiritual gift so father in the mighty name of jesus christ i release it lord on their lives in the name of jesus i let go of it lord i release it their lives would never be the same in the name of jesus hallelujah thank you lord 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 hallelujah come here babs hallelujah lift your hands thank you lord jesus in the name of jesus i bless you i praise you now in the realm of the spirit they are catching something now different people listen different people are catching something else now when they get back home and in their lives they will see the manifestation of what i said you understand hallelujah when you prophesy it will come to pass when you speak in other tongues god will give you the interpretation hallelujah when you lay hands on somebody they will be healed thank you lord jesus when you pray over the phone over somebody there'll be a transference of the anointing of god your life cannot be the same again hallelujah signs wonders and miracles will surely follow you hallelujah this is the beginning of great things say it, the spirit of the lord great things hallelujah i say this is the beginning of great things thank you lord jesus hallelujah 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 come on lift up your hands and receive thank you lord jesus hallelujah thank you lord jesus praise you lord praise you lord praise you lord thank you lord jesus god is wonderful i said god is wonderful hallelujah he's wonderful marvelous worthy to be praised worthy to be uplifted great is his name hallelujah i'm telling you the people that are prayed for your lives cannot be the same again hallelujah just before just before i came down brother johannes i don't know what's his surname the pastor from mandini i forget his surname but anyway he phoned me while i was praying but i took the call and he said to me he says pastor you know when i came to your church he said we were 15 people he said when i got back to mandini he says after you prophesied for me he said the church has now grown to 120 people <laughs> hallelujah and he said he said for two nights he said i had a dream he said for two nights consecutively that's why i phoned to tell you he said i had a dream i saw you in a striped suit he says but you were preaching to thousands and he said i saw thousands coming to the lord and then he said he says pastor when you picked up your hands he said they all fell under the power of god he says i saw it he says god showed me and he said i had to phone you to tell you so what is ahead of us great things tell your neighbor great things are ahead of you hallelujah now let me remind you something when you have a word of prophecy you wage a good warfare with prophecy if you don't see the manifestation within a few days or a few weeks or a few months don't give up you understand god doesn't work on your time frame so after a week don't say ah oh, this thing doesn't work if god said it it must work it must if god promised you something you see why you see why we're so used to fast food and fast this and fast that and instant this and we think well we pray now we'll get it now okay sometimes you may get it now sometimes it might take a little while and sometimes you may get it after some challenges but it's okay you will still get it are you with me i said are you with me hallelujah so victory is yours great things are going to happen hallelujah 